Hey there. After years of living in Los Angeles, I grew to love the summer. I mean, I love the heat, I love the sun, I love the fresh fruits and vegetables, I love the outdoor farmer's market. And now that the weather is getting super cold, I know that there's a lot of things that I was doing in the summer that now I can't do. But I'm going to tell you about these five great habits that I picked up in the summer that I'm going to continue moving into the fall and winter. Hi there, my name is Anna, and like many of you, my whole behavior changes as the weather turns cold and as fall moves into winter, and it kind of puts me into a funk, but this year, it's gonna be different. This year, I'm going to keep the funk at bay. I'm going to implement a few of the habits that I picked up during summer, and I'm going to continue them during the fall and winter months. My hope is that you like this video, and if you do, please give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit subscribe. So here are some of my summer habits that I'm going to be continuing for the next few months. I've always been of the belief that if you eat lower on the hunger scale, you'll do better overall. And what that means is this, if you put hunger on a scale from one to 10, one being not hungry at all, and 10 being ferociously hungry, if you eat when your hunger is at a lower number, you'll tend to make better choices moving forward. And this summer, that's exactly what I did. So typically, I would eat lunch around one and dinner around six. But this summer, because of scheduling changes, I was eating lunch a bit earlier, like around 11.30, and dinner around five. That's what works for me. I also know that when I realize I'm hungry, it's usually too late. What I'll want at that time is something super sweet, and vegetables don't typically look good to me then. And now here's my special secret. If I was going over to somebody's house or meeting friends in a restaurant and it was after six, I knew that by the time I would get food, I would get served, I'd be starving. So what I typically did was pre-eat. In other words, I would eat a meal before I was going out for the meal. And what that did was shoot the responsibility back to me. In other words, I wasn't waiting for somebody else to feed me. I was taking care of myself. And then when I went out to eat, I would still have a light meal or even a regular meal, but at least I knew that all of those choices would be pretty healthy. And this worked so much better for me because if I was meeting people outside of my hunger zone, by the time I sat down and was actually served the food, I could eat a whole basket of bread. Number two, I thought of dinner at breakfast. So you know when you're on vacation and you just go from meal to meal to meal and you're at breakfast and it's a kind of funny thing to say, oh, what are we gonna eat for dinner? Well, that happened a lot this summer, and what I found was that if I thought about it in my head or even planned and took some steps to prepare, my dinners were so much easier. So that could mean anything from pre-cutting a salad to realizing I was out of an ingredient that I needed for dinner. And sometimes during the summer, I do have soup. So it was really easy to take something out of the freezer when it was early morning and it would be defrosted by dinner. I also found that it somehow settled my mind. In other words, I didn't keep postponing that planning of dinner and creating a buildup of stress. And typically, I don't wait for dinner time to start cooking. That never ends well. In other words, if it gets to be 5.30, 6, 6.30, and I still haven't even started dinner, you know, all the plans and preparation, by the time I do eat, I'm usually so famished. My choices aren't great. Number three, melons in the morning. I'm not sure if you know about food combining, but it's basically the idea that different foods don't digest well when they're put into the belly together. 
And one of the main rules is melon is always eaten alone. This summer we had some incredible melons. So I bought watermelons, I don't know, two and three at a time. And in the morning, I typically rose early and really had a taste for melon. And it really worked out for me. I found that I got super hydrated by eating melon in the morning. It also filled me a lot. So I wasn't hungry or needing sweets. Following food combining rules, I did always eat the melon alone. And I found that it kept me away from breads and cereals and all that other stuff that really loads me down in the morning. Keep in mind that when you eat fruits and vegetables, especially if you have a meal of only fruits and vegetables, you're going to need more than what you typically consider a serving. So when you think of a serving of watermelon or a cantaloupe, you think about a cup, two cups at most but that really isn't going to do the trick for you. You're going to be hungry in about half an hour. So when I have watermelon for breakfast or cantaloupe or honeydew for breakfast, I eat a lot of it. Those smaller melons, maybe a whole melon at the morning or at least half of a melon. And watermelon, certainly I would eat a big bowl of it. Number four, social media batching. So not only do I work a lot on social media, but I also use it for entertainment or to catch up with friends, things like that. So I could end up spending each day a lot of time on social media. A lot of it is fine. It's entertainment, it's, it's fun, and it keeps me relevant, but when that just derailed and I would spend hours at a time on social media, I knew that that wasn't great. A good habit for me was to set a timer when I was going onto social media. I would give myself a little bit of time to kind of stroll around and look and see what's going on. And then at the timer buzz, then I started working. I really found that it worked for me when I spent some time just enjoying it without judgment. I also found that it helped me start to work. In other words, if I had to go to my desk knowing, okay, we're gonna work right now, it wasn't as fun as if I knew, well, I can play for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna get to work. It kind of got me there quicker. Remember, the goal with social media is to keep us hooked, right? I mean, they are a business. They are in the business of making money, and that's great, but I wanna keep that in mind as I'm opening my phone. I wanna choose what I'm watching, and I wanna choose how long I'm gonna watch it for. Number five, getting sunlight. I don't know about you, but where I live in Baltimore, Maryland, it's gray, and it can be gray for months on end. And when summertime comes and the sun is peeking through the clouds, it just lifts everybody's mood. And there's actually a physiological reason for that. Mostly it has to do with vitamin D and the way we metabolize it in our body. The more vitamin D, the better our mood. So this winter, I'm going to do my best to keep those levels high. I'm gonna take a really good vitamin D supplement. I'm also going to add in a blue light. So this is a computer light. I got this very inexpensively off of Amazon. And the idea is that you have it turned on and it's in your peripheral view. In other words, you're not looking directly into the light, it's to the side of you. That's all that you need. And when I sit down at my computer in the morning, I'll just turn that on. While it says you might only need 20 minutes to half an hour, I'll just keep turning it on intermittently throughout the day. All of these steps together are going to keep my mood elevated throughout the fall and winter months. If you like any of these, please let me know in the comment section below. Let's start a dialogue and kind of share what works and what doesn't for you. If you like this video, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. Also, 
don't forget to subscribe. And as always, until next time, mwah, ciao.